it's a great opportunity for us to show the impact not only that ASU has on the West Valley, but of the five cities that are part of, or the five communities that are part of this chamber, El Mirage, Sun City, Sun City West, Surprise, and Youngtown, currently they have more than 1,018 students enrolled in ASU combined. This one is what really intrigued me. The faculty and staff who live in these communities and work for ASU, 77 people work for ASU. But to me, the biggest is the impact of the financial, of the, of the scholarships th that they have financed, and it's more than $2 million. So I think that we really owe ourselves a big round of applause for supporting ASU. So as Raul said, we have Dennis Tyner from Ottawa, we have Dr. Gail Plednick from Dicer, we have Melissa Holdaway representing all the charters today. Your big load today with that one. Jim Greeshaber, who is a career and technical education director at Dicert, and Holly Medina, the new campus administrator at Westmac. So why don't we start off this morning, when you stop and think about it, a year from now, Ottawa wasn't here, we weren't here, so let's talk about the what, shall we? Dennis, let's start with you and the what and the why, why you chose this community and how we're going to develop not only the students, but the, the impact that we'll have on economic development and the business community. Uh, well, so why did we choose Surprise? Uh, we looked a lot around the, uh, the West Valley and we looked a lot around Arizona and of course we've been in Surprise for nine years already and uh, we saw the growth that was taking place in Surprise and then we recognized the, um, the limited uh, number of educational institutions that were here in this particular area and thought that there was an underserved market that we could come and serve. So this was a great opportunity for us to be here. Uh, we expect that um, our institution will grow from the 434 students that we opened our doors with this year, we think over in the next 10 years, uh, we can see tremendous growth at our institution and that we can grow probably to about 3,000 students. Uh, we're finding that uh, there's a great response in the area from students in the area, uh, students who are looking to play athletic sports at an other than Division I level, uh, are finding interest in our institution. And so uh, this has been a great opportunity and a great location for us. Uh, more about a little bit more about who we are and what we're trying to do. One of the biggest things that we're doing here, very different than what we're doing in our campus in Ottawa, Kansas, is uh, we're looking to develop work-ready students. Uh, there's a lot that's taking place at the collegiate level, but there's a very little emphasis on graduating students who are ready to enter the workforce, prepared for the, the needs and the demands of the workforce. And so on Wednesdays, our Wednesdays are set aside as personal growth days in which we have uh, seminars in the afternoon for students. Uh, typical um, seminars are things that you would see often in industry where uh, people, leaders from industry come out and, and talk about the needs of, um, of the particular market that you are. In. Uh, so when you take a look at young students today, young students um, struggle a little bit more with the skills that are needed in, in industry versus the skills that are needed in the classroom. They focus much more on the classroom uh, versus focusing on the skills such as uh, interpersonal communications, time management, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the focus of our, our institution here is to develop work-ready students. So we think that we, we can be very, very successful with that, and we think it's a, a certainly a, a missing niche for the market place. So for Dysart, it's very simple. Um, we know public education is the backbone of democracy. We are preparing those future leaders and that future workforce. So it's our responsibility to make certain that if we want a strong community, if we want to have a strong country, then we're going to have students that are ready to take on any of the challenges or opportunities. I often think about this. In our preschool classes, we have students that will welcome in the year 2,100. Think about that. And they're in our system right now. And I know that because my mother is 90. And she can't believe she welcomes in these new years every year after year. But truly, really think about how rapidly things are changing in our workforce and in our life, how we do business. 
So we have to make certain when students are leaving our system, they are armed with not only the knowledge, but those skills and dispositions. So if you look on um, our website, on Dysart's website, you'll see a profile of a future ready graduate. And we address those skills you're talking about. It is about certainly that strong knowledge base, that academic base. But what about communication and the flexibility to adapt to whatever those communication tools are. Think how differently we conduct our business. Um, and quite frankly, I can't even rattle off all the social media things that are out there and how rapidly they're changing. But that's the reality. I do know that I have learned that I can buy anything I want on Amazon. That is for certain. So I don't need to shop anymore. Uh, all I have to do is open up my computer. But again, those are, or my phone. <laughs> and those are the things that um, we know will continue to rapidly change. Change. The other thing we're doing is looking at business trends. I'm also president of AASA, which is the National Superintendents Association. So I have, um, I've had the privilege of really going across the United States and um, actually visiting and talking with business leaders because that's, that is what we need to be doing as a public school system in this nation, connecting with our businesses. I just came back from Boeing and it is amazing when you go into um, their facilities, the skill set that is required and the relationship between the businesses and the schools. And that's exactly what we're trying to build here. A relationship between our businesses, our schools, and certainly our post-secondary. Because what we know is, not everybody needs that four-year degree. They don't. But they're going to have to have those skills to enter into that workforce, whatever that skill set is. And it may be something they could do with a certificate. That's why we're so happy with the relationship that we have with Westmec. Our students are graduating actually with certificates so they can walk into the workforce. And then if they want to advance their skills, they have that option as well. So we're talking about in Dysart and quite frankly uh, across the nation now, um, that is part of what I am trying to really advocate for, redefine, what does future ready really look like? Then redesign. If we redefine that graduate, we have to redesign the system and then reimagine because that student who will be celebrating the year 2100 is going to, going to be living in a much different world. Our responsibility to prepare them. Well, I'm going to shift a little bit and talk a little bit about the why of charter schools. And just to give you just a little bit of education in our community, we have a very uh, thriving charter school community in this area. I know there's one charter school in Youngtown, but in surprise, we have over 7,000 students go to charter schools, which is about 30% of the population in surprise. And the state average is about 16 and a half. So uh, really, the schools that are here, and they're all kind of represented today, which is great to see, all offer something a little bit different. Um, from STEM to music to uh, robotics. And really, it's a matter of every student learns differently and connecting a student with the best environment. There are so many options from Dysart to charter schools, and they all offer something amazing but very different. And so in our community, it's an, uh, one of the things that we, I really believe in is we can offer a wide range of options for students to connect with something that they're really interested in. And, I, and to follow up what Gail said, working with the business community is key. We need your partnerships because we want to make sure our students are phenomenal employees for you in the future. And I'm sure you've had good experiences and you've had bad experiences with young people in your own organizations. And we have to put out a different type of student than we've had in the past that can do those critical thinking skills, that can solve problems um, without having to have direction 100% of the time. So it's a it's a definitely a new day in the education community. And we're really excited to be the leaders in that in our community. Well, we're very excited about Westmec opening this year, and we opened our doors with five programs and a little bit over 200 students. So we have the opportunity to work with all students in this area to prepare them for the job force and to stay within their community. Um, when our students walk out our doors, they have some type of certification or even a license, and they're able to go straight into the workforce. Or they can use those skills that they have learned to help pay for their further education. So they're not ending up with that 
high student debt that we're seeing a lot of our students come back with. Because as we know, it's not cheap to get that degree as they continue on, so they can work in those areas. So as our campus continues to grow, we have four phases that we are looking at. We just opened phase one, we're building phase two, and as the economy and businesses and needs change, we hope to change with that to provide that educational training and certification to stay within the surprise area and continue, continue that workforce development and um, students staying within the community and not having to drive halfway across the town in order to get that education. So the idea is they grow here, they learn here, and they stay here. So currently, West Meg has our five programs are cosmetology. Yes, the salon is open. For I have a lot of people asking. So our salon is open from two to six o'clock, and it's work that is done by the students, um, and it's been quite successful. We have physical therapy technician, medical assisting, IT security, and law and public safety. Next year, we'll be opening up to dental assisting as well as veterinary tech. And then the year after that, we're looking at more medical programs and then possible industrial um, arts types of programs as well. So we're going to be building over the next two years. Good morning. I have to say that, you know, I'm excited with Holly sitting next to me because of our partnership with West Mech and that our kids not only get to take the advantage of the career and technical education programs that we offer within our schools, but they get to take advantage of the West Mech programs and we have a wonderful partnership with them. And so thank you, West Mech, for that. I also want to put a plug in for ASU. We just had one of our architecture students admitted to the ASU School of Scott Construction. Del Webb School of Construction, and then we also have our engineering program has a partnership with the EPICS program in ASU. So ASU is alive and vibrant in uh, the Dyser Unified School District. But when it comes to career and technical education, and I look at to thank Raul for the partnership that we have, and, and the Chamber is a promotional partner of our career and technical education programs. And what I mean by that is when a new business or a business is in town, and, and as a member of the Chamber, we that gives us access access to be able to have first internships. So our students that do internships with our business partners is really that opportunity for um, that business to have an op uh, an internship right off the bat. And an example, we just had a new um, a retirement facility open up over by Valley Vista, I believe, and Raul introduced me to um, the director via email saying, hey, here's a partnership if you're interested in. She got really excited because they have a culinary kitchen and we have a culinary program at Valley Vista, so it's going to be a natural fit that we're going to be able to, to have that partnership. Also, I look at, at Mike and Janine and the City of Surprise and, and what we have. We just placed five engineering students with their water department and water facility, and thank you you, Bob, um, for uh, helping with that and Skip. And, and just, I get excited whenever I think about the opportunities that our students have um, over the next year, two years, three years, five years, 10 years down the road, and it's our job to get them ready for the workforce. And that's not only for going out into the job, but it's also getting them ready for the, the universities, because we know if a student wants to be an architect, an architecture, in architecture, he needs to go to university engineering, they need to go to the university. So it's our job to get them ready for that. Thank you. Um, Gail, I want to go back to what you were saying a little earlier about reimagining. And let's take a look 10 years into the future and see, and, and let's start with you, and think about what education is going to look like 10 years from now. And, and um, you know, going forward with what you're saying with all of the students now who have the opportunity to go out there and work in these as interns. You have what, 56 interns now? Somewhere around there. Yeah, imagine 56 students actually working in various businesses in this area. What, what do you see happening in, in the next 10 years? And let's talk about that. 
So we are on that path to personalize, and we have to be on that path. You know, I think about Amazon when you go on, even though I, I don't know I need something, it tells me I do, and I look twice at it. <laughs> the reality is that right now our students have to have that educational opportunity where we're tapping into their passions. They have to have a strong academic base. That's, that's the first piece. But in order for them to be able to be prepared to take on those challenges, we don't even know what problems they're going to be solving. We don't know what jobs. If you look at the trend data, automation is replacing many of the jobs that are currently in existence. And now there are new jobs being created. So we're preparing children for careers that we don't even know exactly what that skill set is. So for us, it is about personalizing education. And that does not mean that we're not teaching the standards. Just the opposite. Strong academic knowledge base. But then when we talk about those skill sets, we have to make certain that we're teaching children those problem solving, those communication skills, those critical thinking, design storytelling, things we hadn't thought about before, but in the future, those are gonna be some key and critical pieces that students need to know. When I talk about personalization, I'm talking about changing place, I'm talking about changing pace, I'm talking about tapping into passion. What do I mean? Students are learning 24-7. You know how I know that? My 10-year-old grandchild has taught me, when I get stuck, go to YouTube, and I can figure out how to do things, and I have. They, they have access to information so that they're constantly learning and learning about those things they have passion about. The other thing is we can't think of place as those campuses that we have or those four walls in a classroom. Because again, think about what we just talked about, all those internships. Isn't that the best way for students to learn, to have that opportunity to be engaged in relevant kinds of projects? That means our business community. That means tapping in to our partners in higher ed, which we're doing already. We're, we're creating those opportunities for uh, students going to Ottawa to work with students in our classrooms. But really, that classroom is going to be defined much differently. So when you think about the big concepts that have to change in education, that is going to happen whether or not we plan to do that because students are taking ownership of their own learning. And all you have to do is ask these DECA students who are leaders, who are actually making a change in what's happening out there in businesses because their voice is being heard. So those are the kinds of things we better be prepared for or we're gonna be the next dinosaurs and be extinct because students will find a way to learn. Okay, so I've, uh, I've told students all my life, um, don't tell me what you're going to be doing in the future because I know that you don't know what you're going to be doing in the future. So here goes, I'm going to tell you what's going on in the future of education when I really know that I have no idea what's going to happen in the future of education. Um, Secondary education is skyrocketing in price, so price is a major factor. And um, although all of us would love to keep the price down, the truth is that there, uh, there's less funding, and so schools are charging more. So it's expensive to go to school, and we have to find a way that we can shortcut the amount of time that students are in school. At the same time, parents, when they, when they bring their young son or young daughter to school and they're looking at a school, they want to know what our job placement is. They want to know that after they've paid all of this money for an education, that somebody's going to be able to find a job and be able to pay off their bills at the end of time. So the internships and the co-op experiences that you have are going to be critically important in the future. I see schools doing more and more and more of that. How do you, how do you gain the experience that you need so that a, you know that, it, that you like the uh, particular discipline that you're studying, and B, so that you have a, a set of skills in place already and some, some work experience. I'm always humored when a college graduate goes out looking for a job and somebody wants to know what experience they have in the field. Because if you have experience, you can shortcut the amount of time that they're going to be spending on you to learn the trade. So it's important that they have those experiences while they're going through school. Any partnerships with high schools that can reduce the amount of time that students are spending in college 
college is going to be significant in the future. Any programs that we have in which students can spend three years or two years or two and a half years in college and still end up with a bachelor's degree is going to be critically important. So relationships with the high schools and colleges, I see, uh, I see that's going to happen more and more and more. And uh, students will either do dual enrollment or they'll do a variety of different things with colleges so that the, the student graduating from the high school can easily transition into that college. And there'll be relationships and that will help the colleges and universities because those relationships will help with students going directly into their school. That's what I see coming up in the future. Well, I'm, to piggyback on, on both of those things, I think what we're also seeing is definitely students are taking, have to take ownership when they want to take ownership of their own learning. And really that means the shifting things down. So finding their passion when they're in elementary or in middle school, uh, like we have programs in middle school now that we used to have in high school of exposing kids to STEM and um, business entrepreneurship, all those things. So now they can d find their passion younger and then put them in a high school that specializes in that area, which Dysart has several, the charter schools have several, and really connect them to, in, while they're in high school, then they do dual enrollment with those college pathways or WestMEC and get that certification. So by the time they leave high school, they're either career ready or they've already done one or two years of college. And that is really something that we're gonna see more and more of because our students, uh, because they have so information, like Gail said, they are learning so much more than, um, than ever. And what we learned maybe in college, they're learning in fifth and sixth grade. So it's definitely a new day in education. I think we need to continue down that road and look at those partnerships. And it does start in the elementary schools as it comes up with the career exploration. Because how many of you knew what you wanted to do when you were in high school? And how many of you are doing that same thing 20 years down the 10, 20 years down the road? And especially with the students nowadays, they want change. They want to try new things. So they may not be staying in that area very long. So finding that passion early, um, learning about it. And it's OK if they go down one path when they're in high school and they find, OK, this wasn't for me. And for example, some of the medical students, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a doctor, and the first time they see blood, they're on the floor. <laughs> it's better that they experience that without putting thousands and thousands of dollars into, um, in debt to learn that this isn't the road we want to go down. So giving them those experiences across the realm, um, preparing them earlier, allowing them to get those college credits so the amount of time that they are spending in the college is a lot less, so they are entering into the workforce is very important. Yeah, absolutely, I, I agree with everything that they said. And when we look at the dual enrollment piece, that's where our, our um, higher ed is really important with us because we're getting a lot of our programs, um, not only the academic side of it, but the current technical education side with those dual enrollment pieces to where kids can earn those uh, college credits while they're in high school. Um, really quick, can I, um, the students that are here, Diane, can I do this? The, stu the students that are here from uh, law and public safety, engineering and architecture, can you guys stand real quick? These guys uh, took some time out of their uh, academic learning to be here. But this is, to me, this is what's important for them, to be around you all as those mentors, because these are our future. Um, and then I also wanted, whenever we look at it, uh, we have a phlebotomy program. Poor Dawn and her students are back there in the far corner corner, uh, we have a, a state-of-the-art ph phlebotomy program at Willow Canyon High School, and I'm going to brag real quick because last year, Don nationally certified 47 to 48 students um, out of high school. So those kids are ready to go into the workforce and work at Del Webb or work at Sonora Quest straight out of high school drawing blood. So, uh, and I know that our partnership with uh, Banner, Del Webb, and Tara Thorm and their program there, she's hired four of our students over the past few years in their her top performers. So whenever we truly do look at what we're doing um, and really moving into the future, it's that career, but it's the partnership with our uh, colleges and higher ed for those dual enrollment classes so the kids are ready when they leave high school. And I think that when you look at, at what Holly was saying in terms of the courses now that we're going to be offering at WestMEC and realize, A, where we're sitting today here at the Colonnade, and the fact that our 
our campus is literally between two banner hospitals. Obviously, the emphasis is going to be on health care because that is what is needed in this particular part of the valley. And so all of our five central campuses have, a, have certain qualities that match the business needs of that particular community. And we really feel strongly in, in having great health care programs for this community because of, of what, what and where we're sitting. Thank you. Let's give them a big round of applause, folks. Awesome. Thank you very much.